in my last session uh, i had discussed about why power quality has uh, taken a upper uh, hand now and why there is so much of importance given to power quality so we'll continue with that so this is professor uma rao from rv college of engineering bengaluru bringing you the lecture series under the ages of vtu e sectiona program so we saw why power quality is important so we'll see again which are the industries vulnerable to power quality issues and whether power quality is same as voltage quality okay now uh in in uh, the previous sessions we had discussed about reliability so reliability is uninterrupted power supply to the customer so in reliability there are something called as the nines nines of reliability so we will see what it translates to in terms of the power industry so you have already seen you know na uh, sai fi sai di kai di and all those indices so you can easily relate so the first is 3 nines reliability 3 nines that is 99.9% reliability good enough for homes okay good enough for homes so this translates to 9 hours of interruption per year so in a year a customer loses 9 hours we are assuming here that you know when we calculate that all the customers are affected whenever there is an interruption then we have four nines that is 99.99% factories will need it because you know it's critical for them so factories so this translates to about an hour 59 minutes to 1 hour of interruption per year for one year then we have five nines 99.999% so hospitals airports very critical operations so this translates to around 5 minutes six nines 99.9999% banks lot of transactions today everything is online all we have online transactions and this translates to 32 seconds of loss of power finally 99s so 99.799999 percent 30 milliseconds these are your online markets stock markets will just crash so even if you don't have power for a little time it re leads to tremendous loss so you see reliability requirements today are very very stringent customers cannot tolerate you know loss of power so we will see some some reasons for this increased focus equipment have become very sensitive to voltage disturbances because i have electronic equipment everything is automated you have microprocessors so these all cannot withstand huge deviations and voltage disturbances our good old motor fan okay it is rated 230 volts even if you give 210 volts or 240 or 250 nothing much is going to happen whereas imagine you have a you have a small switch a mosfet 5 volts if you give 6 volts mosfet is gone so very sensitive okay so electronics and power electronic devices have become very sensitive companies have become more sensitive to loss of production time because processes are automated and there is increased use of power electronic uh, components in in um, industry and electricity is today considered a basic right so interruption means complaints a customer can now claim damages that's a legal uh, aspect of it okay so if you want to know more about this you can refer to a paper by jane clemenson from epri so on one side i have equipment which are very sensitive to voltage disturbances and on the other side we have equipments 
which cause voltage disturbances. They are the reason for the voltage disturbances. So the utilities view disturbances due to end user equipment as the main power quality problem. So the utility says it's not our fault. It's because of the kind of load we have today. Your LEDs, your CFLs, your computer loads, your laser printers, your power electronic drives, the rectifiers, all your chargers. So these are the ones which are causing a quality disturbance. That's the utility claim. Okay. So this is very paradoxical. Just look at this. Modern power electronic equipment, it is not only sensitive to voltage disturbances, but it also causes disturbances for other customers. So first of all, these equipment require very high quality, but the nature of current they draw corrupts other customers, right? So the amount of load fed via power electronic converters has increased enormously. Even in your small charger, you have a converter. AC to DC, a rectifier is there because your charging takes place through DC. Okay. So this is another reason why uh, we need to uh, you know, focus on that. So here, the main issue with all these electronic equipment is a non-sinusoidal current. They drop rectifiers and inverters. It's not sinusoid. So if you take a typical rectifier, it would almost draw, you know, you have a capacitor at the output of the rectifier. So once the capacitor gets charged, yeah, or during charging, it will draw. Then it gets discharged. The source will not supply. Then next, you will only have a current when the capacitor is again getting charged. And for the majority of the point for a good rectifier, the capacitor doesn't charge. So your impulses, all your rectifiers, all your charges will be drawing currents like this. So all these equipment are the main source and cause for harmonic distortion of the current. So this harmonic currents will cause voltage drops. What is a voltage drop anywhere? It is I into Z. Z is just a number, right? I is non-sinusoidal. Therefore, I Z will also be non-sinusoidal. So these harmonic distortions in the current also cause harmonic distortions in the voltage, right? And you you just like let let me just illustrate it with a simple example. Let us say I have a source. Okay, now I have a line of feeder. So the drop here is I Z. I Z is the drop. Now let's say this at the receiving end I have two loads. Load one and load. Let us say this industry, load one, is driven by power electronic converters. All the drives there, maybe it's a, it's a small steel mill or a cement factory or a textile mill or something like that. But load two is predominantly sinusoidal. Unity power factor or LPF, it draws. There, there is done no corruption. So here what happens, this draws harmonic currents because there are rectifiers, inverters, so the current this load draws is harmonic, whereas this draws only fundamental, no harmonics. This load only draws fundamental current. Don't confuse with PF. I'm not talking of power factor. I'm only talking of the frequency of the current. So what will, what is the current here? Obviously, it's the sum of these two currents. So the current here will have both the fundamental and the harmonic will have both the fundamental and the harmonic, right? So the drop here, this IZ drop, Z is only a number. Since I has harmonics, this IZ drop also will have harmonics. So even if the supply is purely sinusoid, what is the voltage here? The voltage here is, here is the source voltage minus the supply voltage. Sorry, minus the drop. So the source voltage is sinusoidal, but the drop is non-sinusoidal. So the voltage here will be non-sinusoidal. Clear. And this voltage is fed to this load also, both L1 and L2. So you see the culprit is L1, which is drawing harmonic currents, but L2 also will see a voltage which has harmonic components. So this is very tricky, you know. The utility is not responsible for that. It's actually the load, right? So each individual load may not generate much harmonics. For example, one mobile charger, if you see, it won't you know, draw much harmonic currents, but you have millions of chargers. 
So together they all cause supply distortion. So this is another reason why there is a focus on power quality. Then while it was evolving, things were fine. But now we know that there is a quality issue. So we need to standardize the performance. So now they, they're no longer consumers, they're customers. A consumer only, a consumer has to take whatever is given. A customer has a right and they can, they expect their wishes to be satisfied. This is another reason. Then now electricity is viewed as a product, as a commodity. So there is a quality attached to any product, just like it is attached to any other product. There is a, there is a quality attached to power. Since power is now viewed as a product. So now there's a lot of privatization all over the globe, right? Generation is privatized, distribution is privatized. Then we have market trading, power trading, etc. So whose responsibility is reliability? If the entire industry was under one control, like government, how it was in India till very recently, and uh, then that person is responsible for reliability, quality, operation, control, everything. But then now I have many generators. In between, I have power traders. And then I have distribution companies. So whose responsibility is reliability and quality? So who should, for example, in the previous example I gave you, the load one is distorting the quality, voltage. So who should supply, who should pay or you know, place equipment so that the problem is rectified. This is very difficult, okay? And utilities also want to deliver a good product because there is competition. And as I told you, if, if it's a customer, the customer has a right. So they, they can get into a lot of legal issues. You can sue the distribution company saying that my TV got spoiled because you gave me poor quality power. So they are also now careful. And you know, all over the world, power is very good now. Reliability is very good. We have almost uninterrupted supply and uh, power cuts have become rare. So the supply is enough to meet the demand. So now we talk of quality. Once our basic requirement is satisfied, you want better quality. And today we can measure power quality. You talk of harmonics. Yes, I have meters which can measure it measure this frequency spectrum. You talk of a sag, a small disturbance for a few cycles that, that can be measured. So earlier we didn't have measuring, uh, such sensitive measuring equipment. We could only measure long, long time RMS disturbances. Instantaneous measurements and all were not possible, but with digital electronics, it's possible. And so we can, you know, have, we have very good quantification of the power quality disturbance. So these are all some of the reasons why it's become very, the focus uh, has shifted to power quality. Next, is power quality equal to voltage quality? This is a question often asked. When I talk of power quality, what do I mean? How can you talk of quality of power, right? So one thing you should understand, utility has control on the voltage they are giving you. See, I have at my plug, I have 230 volts sinusoidal. Right. If I connect an iron box, it will draw current at UPF, fundamental current. The same thing if I connect a charger, laptop charger, then what happens? It will draw pulses because, you know, it, it has a rectifier. You, does utility have a control of it? No. So utility is giving me good supply. Sinusoidal, 230 volts, single phase I'm getting. But then what current I draw? from the grid depends on the load. And what load I connect, the utility does not have control on it. I might connect a CFL, I might connect an LED, I might connect a motor, a laptop charger, anything. So the utility has control on the quality of the voltage and no control over the currents that particular loads might drop. Therefore, whenever you talk of standards in power quality, it is all devoted to maintaining the supply voltage within certain limits. So the utility will tell you, I will give you sinusoidal voltage within plus or minus 10% of your rated voltage. 
it can't hold it absolutely stationary at the rate of voltage impossible because the system is dynamic so all your standardization from the utility perspective will be only for voltage so maybe you can think of power quality means voltage quality okay so for a long time the main concern of consumers was reliability that means continuity of supply now that is met because we have enough of supply so demand is met so once you have continuity of supply you would start talking of quality also okay so the cost associated with lack of quality can now be very large as i told you because electronic devices want very high quality and industries are increasingly reliant on electronic devices and therefore poor quality can cause tremendous loss so i told even in my previous session if there is a, a production line trips right the power supply deviation may be for two three cycles but to get back to original thing it may take hours together so you just see the increasing uh, order the lowest is availability next is reliability it should be available all the time that is reliability then what is available should have good quality and finally the customer must be satisfied so this is the order okay the most vulnerable uh, industries are process industries because they are all automated airline reservations banking sector which is all now online semiconductor very very high quality they need even a small deviation in the quality can make your uh, you know the silicon wafers uh, uh, to be rejected stock market and healthcare here it's a matter of life now uh, there is a slight difference in the way the words are used i typically uses the word power quality nobody uses the word voltage quality though we agreed that power quality means voltage quality and iec the european body uses the word electromagnetic compatibility okay so i typically defines in standard 1100 power quality is the concept of powering and grounding powering means giving supply sensitive equipment in a matter that is suitable to the operation of that equipment okay yeah. so i must be able to supply power and ground the equipment so that it operates properly now iec defines the same thing in 610011 standard as electromagnetic compatibility is the ability of an equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable electromagnetic disturbances to anything in that environment please remember current voltage they are all electromagnetic waves so when a current is distorted you can say it's an electromagnetic distortion electromagnetic disturbance and this disturbance can harm other equipment okay so i iec defines power quality in this way emc it's called as electromagnetic compatibility there is another uh, set you know set of parameters defining the property of power supply one is voltage quality is concerned with deviations of the voltage from the ideal the frequency the magnitude the shape right next current quality is concerned with deviation of the current from the ideal so the ideal current there is no magnitude there is nothing like an ideal magnitude whereas for voltage it is there but an ideal current means it should be sinusoidal and single frequency no harmonics okay so if it is upf all the better if the current is upf power quality is a combination of voltage quality and current quality here yeah. there is no ideal shape for power power doesn't have any shape there is nothing like a sinusoidal power okay so if you maintain voltage quality and if you maintain current quality we say there is good power quality but for all purposes you can think of power quality as voltage quality okay then the iec compatibility uh, standards they define as the ability of a device or equipment to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable electromagnetic disturbances okay so you have immunity 
Immunity means the device should be immune to small disturbances in the system. That's called as immunity. And then you have emission. The device should not emit anything into the system, both ways. So vendors, when they develop a product, right? They have to see both this, that the immunity is good and the emission is low. That means the equipment can operate safely in, in the electromagnetic environment. And this equipment also does not corrupt the electromagnetic uh, environment. Okay. So voltage quality involves the performance of the power system towards the load, how the system affects the load, and current quality involves how the load affects the system. The type of current drawn will affect the drops in the system, right? So voltage quality is determined by the utility most often and current quality is determined by the load. The power system can only control the quality of the supply voltage and it has no control over the current. Therefore, the standards in the power quality area are devoted to maintaining the supply voltage within certain limits. So in the next session, we will just see what are these common power quality problems that occur in the system. Okay, thank you.